So thank you everybody, I'm Jen Curry and I'm going to present the case of the two skeletons. And I presented this case initially in a lecture I gave for the STS 101 class around feminist technology and design. Before I jump into my talk, I just wanna say that when I use the term female or male, I'm referring to those assigned female or male at birth. So in the lecture, we talked about feminist technology and we talked about what is the goal of feminist technology. Should it be to de-emphasize gender differences or should it be that we recognize gender differences when we're designing certain technologies? So I'm going to make the case today that we need to recognize the differences with genders when we're designing things. And I'm gonna do that through two different stories. The first story are crash test dummies, not the band. So, <laughs> maybe blocking it, but crash test dummies have been used for over 50 years, and mainly it's the 50th percentile male model that's used. There's also a 95th percentile male model that's used, and this is used in automotive design. We're talking about airbags, seat belts, steering columns, all those safety features that we have in our cars. A female model, quote female model, was not created until 1988, and it's represented right there, and it's called the hybrid fifth because it's a fifth of a male model. So they just took a male and made them smaller. And it's actually used for passenger testing. And it wasn't used for passenger testing until 2003. And it's also used in, or these models are used in other industries as well, such as designing equipment for soldiers in wartime, ejection seats and fighter pilot um, planes, as well as um, equipment for uh, flight, safe, or space flight, there we go. Those are all male-dominated fields. So they're designing technology using mainly male, dominate, or male dummies. Here are a bunch of women with said female model. As you can see, it doesn't accurately represent women. In fact, it's more closely related to a teenager. And the issue is that crash test guidelines only require car companies to use male models for driver crashes. As I said before, the females use mainly as a passenger. Now this is a problem because women make up over 50% of drivers. And there's also differences in the driving habits. So women tend to drive more locally and at lower speeds. Men drive further distances and at higher speeds. So if you're designing cars for larger bodies driving at higher speeds, you're gonna have things like this happen, where women are more likely to be injured or killed in similar type or severity car crashes. If you look at how women are injured, um, they're injured pretty much everywhere, significantly in their legs, and if you look at the chest and the abdomen, they're also severely injured. And that brings us to the case of our two skeletons. So we have two skeletons. Initially, you might just say, Jen, these are two skeletons. But there's differences. There's a male on the left and a female on the right. And still, they might just look like the same thing. But let me highlight some features. If you look at a male skeleton, their head tends to be larger, their skull, their jaw. If you look at the rib cage, women tend to have a narrower rib cage and a shorter sternum. If you look at the pelvis, women have a wider pelvis, childbirth, um, that also changes the angle of their hips. And then if you look at their legs, when, women tend to have a smaller diameter leg uh, bones. And so if you think back to that previous slide where we looked at the areas where women are being injured, we're talking about their thoracic area as well as their legs. So car designers need to really consider the fact that women um, are in these cars during these crashes. Co people have been pushing for Congress to require female crash test dummies to be used in testing. They're still trying to get that pushed through, but we have the issue that we don't really have a good female model. We still have just that fifth percentile teenager driver. But in Sweden, they actually finally developed the first truly average female crash test dummy. So hopefully we'll start getting that used in crash testing here um, in the US. Now the next story I'm gonna talk about <laughs> is the sports bra, but more broadly sports equipment. So if we think about sports, women were typically excluded until Title IX. So then they needed sports equipment. So what did they do? They took men's equipment, made it smaller. Um, but there wasn't a sports bra. And so in the 70s when running took off, Lisa Lindell really wanted to run and she wanted to be more comfortable. So she was talking about it and her husband made a comment of why don't you just take some jock straps? And so she did, she took two jock straps <laughs> and sewed them into her first sports bra. And so she worked with her partner, Hinda Miller, and they went out and they took videos and measurements to see how women's breasts moved while they were running to increase um, comfort while they are running. And this research continues on today. So they have motion capture systems that they're using to measure women's breasts while they're moving. 
and see are some data that shows some examples of looking at the movements up, down, left, right, forward to back. So it's more comfortable for women to participate in sports. But this has been going on for quite some time. In 1985, Leanne Lawson did her thesis on this. So she had various sports bras that she was measuring. She had women running without sports bras, women running with sports bras, and taking all that data. And then she had this very supportive, sarcasm, uh, <laughs> male professor say that this was a colossal waste of money. She should have just tried a bunch of these bras and then made a recommendation, as if she could represent all women while running. So we still have a lot of these comments being made as we look at various feminist technologies. There's a famous uh, quote or attention given to Brandy Chastain when she scored the winning goal for the US women's soccer team in 1999 and <gasps> showed her sports bra. So um, it's my argument being still that we need to consider these gender differences as we're designing various technologies. <laughs>